This is a University of Otago podcast. Okay, um, good morning everybody. It's um, my pleasure to talk to you over the next five minutes about intellectual property. It's, it's a huge topic, so it'll be a bit of a whistle-stop tour. What is intellectual property? <clears throat> well, the World Intellectual Property Organization, which was founded about 40 years ago, uh, defines it basically as the products of the human mind. So it's basically any idea that you or I, any individual might have, um, and wish to control. So what are the sort of IP categories? Just trying to harness some of those ideas into general categories. Uh, a lot of people in the audience today are librarians, so you'll be quite familiar with the notion of copyright. And I put copyrights in brackets because, of course, um, copyright is a bundle of rights, and Richard will talk a bit more about uh, that aspect of copyright. But um, probably less familiar to many of you will be that commercial dimension to intellectual property, which are things like patents, trademarks, um, designs, and geographic indicators. And probably the best known one to all of us would be champagne. So IP rights. Well, IP rights are important because they give, they give the creator a range of um, controls and they give them, the, the creator an incentive to create. If you're going to come up with an idea, it's only right that you should get fair recognition for what you create and that you should have some control over that in terms of how that idea is used or reused or sold. And the bottom line really is, is a dollar, a dollar um, figure. You need to be able to earn a living from the ideas that you have. And in, within New Zealand, we have our own intellectual property office, which is IPONS, and they have a very nice, I thought, a very clear, succinct statement on their website, which pretty much sums up um, the point of IP and IP rights. Uh, Linda very kindly put this image on Flickr, and you can see it was labelled for commercial reuse with modification, which is why I could add it to my PowerPoint today. And Linda's, Linda Lane's uh, workspace is probably not untypical of any workspace or anybody's home for that matter. You can see there's a whole cluster of intellectual property happening all around you in terms of the artworks on the walls, um, the screen rights on the television coming through and the media players. In the lower left hand corner you can see there's a comfy chair so somebody's put time, energy, uh, money into designing that chair. So we're surrounded by intellectual property. Um, everywhere we go we really can't escape it. So just looking at um, four distinct user groups of, if you like, intellectual property. Um, we don't have any undergrads with us today, I don't think, but um, if you are an undergraduate, you, your main interest, I would imagine, is in finding information. And along with finding information, you need to use that information safely. So your attention would mostly be geared around issues of copyright, uh, how to find images it can use safely. And I've just tucked in, it's not very easy for you to see in the corner, uh, a link to uh, a useful tool on understanding plagiarism. Not quite within the basket of IP, but it certainly comes into the whole notion of the ethics of using information. And there are some useful links, and I've put them at the end of these PowerPoint slides, giving you a bit more information about plagiarism. If you're a postgraduate, as well as being um, interested in your obligations, you'll also be interested in the rights of your, the IP for the items that you, you create. And most significantly, what you are creating as a postgraduate would be a thesis. And so on, the, on both sides of the coin, you're going to be concerned about using material for your thesis. But on the flip side of that, you're going to be concerned about how others use your thesis and how your thesis is made available to others. And um, we, we might get a chance to talk a little bit more about thesis. Um, as an academic, well, again, you're going to be interested um, as you're in your rights as a creator of IP. And in that bubble on the right-hand side, if you go to the University Intellectual Property Rights for Academic Staff, these are the sorts of areas that you're paying attention to in terms of your, your intellectual property rights. Um, and you need to be aware, aware of these. Your obligations as an educator. Again, a very important aspect of, of teaching in a tertiary environment. You're going to be not only using your own resources, but you're going to be copying for teaching. You're going to be perhaps recording as we are today. And it's important to know what sort of policies and um, rules are, are, are you're bound by. And again, for both of those bullet points on the screen, there are University of Otago policies and guides available 
for you to follow. Most of the people in the room are librarians, so I think we all need to be aware of the sorts of things that I've touched on very likely. We won't know the, the detail of a lot of these, but we certainly need to know where to find out information to support the, the research community that we work with. Just a cautionary footnote about intellectual property. Not everybody agrees with the notion of intellectual property, and Richard Stallman's probably the strongest advocate um, against this notion of intellectual property, which he calls a seductive mirage, in the sense that it's really a very uh, convenient catch-all for a whole bunch of laws that needn't necessarily sit together. And there are alternative models which are emerging these days, and uh, Mark's going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, the other cautionary footnote is that um, the notion of IP is very much a Western uh, concept and doesn't fit necessarily fit very neatly with other communities around the world. Um, Maoridom for here in New Zealand don't find it particularly helpful when they're trying to uh, uh, understand and, and control and manage the information that they really feel they're more custodians of as a group. And even within Western tradition, you can see we've got um, uh, information which is no longer uh, covered by IP or really never was. If we think about folk tales and legends, their origins are uncertain and they're basically out there in what we call the public domain. So I've touched on a few um, various aspects of IP as well as a broad overview. I'm going to hand over to my colleagues on the panel who are going to talk about copyright, a little bit more about Creative Commons and also this thing called open education resources. But just before I do that, um, I mentioned quite a number of uh, various places where there are information policies to support your understanding around IP. So I've included those links. And crucially, I've also acknowledged any of the images or um, screenshots that I've used. I've made sure they're all available under a Creative Commons license. And the last slide is also very important. So thank you very much. <laughs>